This program was first broadcast on Canterbury's access media station, Plains FM, and was made with the assistance of New Zealand On Air. Morning, Bliss lovers. It is Rebecca Davison here with the Find Your Bliss show every Thursday morning at 9am on the Plains FM radio station. And today we're coming to you to speak to you about redesigning the subconscious. So here on the Find Your Bliss radio show, we talk about all things intuitive, metaphysical, esoteric, spiritual, and woo woo and today we're talking about what it takes to redesign your subconscious and why you would even want to do this but how this works in particular to abundance so as we well maybe we don't know your rational critical mind which everybody places so much attention on in terms of focus attention intelligence is actually the weakest part of your energetic makeup So if you're looking at yourself, and I talked about this last night in the three-day mini challenge that we're having over in the Facebook group for the Intuitive Life Academy, Creating Profit for Lightworkers, is we talked about the fact that you're an oscillating field of energy, which is good to know in terms of energy management. So if you're an oscillating field of energy and you have a physical body and you have the source energy within you, your light, your soul, your spirit, and then you have these energy fields outside of your body. So you have your aura, you're probably familiar with that. You might have heard that word before. Your auric field, your etheric field, your celestial field. So you have all these connections to the greater, more infinite part of yourself. And of course, then in the physical body, you have energy centers also known as chakras so this is all part of your energetic makeup and it makes you who you are so your rational critical mind is actually one of the least powerful parts of your makeup and you're probably aware of this because of your monkey mind your I call her a chatty Kathy you know that part of your mind that just loves to create a story it's like a constant running commentary and this running commentary though is not who you are it's not even really originating from your true self your true self is actually really the observer of the rational critical mind and the rational critical mind you know loves to identify and loves to tell a story and loves to go into chitter chatter and loves to kind of collect fluff really So your rational critical mind, and the funny thing is, in society, we place so much focus on the mind. That's why we see a lot of people who literally live in their head. They don't know what it is to be in the body. You know, often part of the spiritual pathway is to learn how to get out of your head and into your body and start listening to your body's wisdom and guidance and awareness that it has in terms of you being able to create a reality that you really love. So you have your rational critical mind and it's telling you often these stories, pretty much 98% of what goes through your rational mind too. It's not really true. It's a story. Often what happens is we, we perceive something in our reality and then we contribute a meaning to it. Is that good? Is it bad? And we get taught this because we live in a planet of duality. Light, dark, right, wrong, good, bad, pass, fail. It's all there. It's all um, reinforced from a very young age. You know, especially as a baby, we can move through our emotions really quickly and really easily because we're not judging them. We don't have that level of awareness yet to go, this feeling is bad and this feeling is good. But that's what happens when we get older. You know, if we're crying or we're upset, somehow that that is bad. If we're angry or rageful, that that is bad. And obviously, in some ways, this is obviously behavior that has been conditioned into us to create a society that works harmoniously. So we don't have people walking down the street and just expressing anger, which would trigger other people's central nervous systems. However, we we need to learn to reclaim our power to be able 
to be able to be a good feeler and to do our feelings in a way in a safe environment that works for us where we feel loved, seen, witnessed. If you've heard me on any other show for the Find Your Bliss radio show, you'll know that I talk about that quite extensively about what it is to reclaim your power and to understand that your feelings are a guidance system and to work with your feelings and to know what is a true feeling or an erroneous feeling. Now, what do I mean by that? A true feeling is uh, intuitive guidance, like when you walk into a room and you have a perception in your body about what the vibration of that room is versus an erroneous feeling which comes from a thought process which is connected to a story so therefore is not coming from a place of truth. Your feeling is correct but your feeling is following the thought process that you've had and this is the process of discernment that we do as adults. We start asking ourselves is my thought process which is contributing to the way that I'm feeling, it's creating a chemical reaction in my body is that actually coming from a place of truth and that is the wisdom right that's discernment to go oh look I'm actually telling myself a story which is contributing to the way I feel hi Vanessa how are you lovely just doing a shout out on Facebook there for you guys who are listening I always do the first half hour of the show over on Facebook so you can come find that on so you can see me on the intuitive life academy page So, if we are looking at our thought processes, and this is the thing, often what happens is we are so closely in our thought processes, we think that often some people think that their thoughts and therefore their feelings are true. And this is what spiritual wisdom is, right? To be able to start unpacking that and going, is what I'm thinking right now coming from a place of truth? And you can pretty much be guaranteed that anything that is leading you towards suffering is untrue. And I know that's really challenging. A lot of people get really triggered by that. To hear that they feel like, oh, my trauma isn't true. That's not correct. Your feelings are always correct. They're always showing you something. But our job is to do this discernment and go, is this something inside of me that needs needs to be healed if it's a feeling of contraction or is it contributing being contributed to my headspace by what I'm thinking now bear with me folks because we will come full circle to get to the subconscious because of course what happens is these thought processes when we have enough of them they gain energy they compound an interest so to speak and then they start dipping into your subconscious right your subconscious has a memory of everything that has ever happened to you it's kind of like taking all those photos taking all the snapshots and finding filing it in a filing cabinet system. Now what happens though with your subconscious is you can, because you're attributing meaning to certain things, then your subconscious can store things in a way that is not necessarily the truth. It can be a little distorted. You have your memories in your subconscious. You have your value system in your subconscious and it is subconscious. We're probably all familiar with the iceberg the top of the iceberg being on the top of the water which is the smallest part right which is the rational critical mind your thought processes your linear thought processes and then the subconscious is the bigger part of the iceberg which is underneath the water and again this drives our behaviors our attitudes our perceptions of reality and a lot of our behaviors are unconscious right they are beneath the surface which is why people don't often even know that they are limiting themselves in their capacity. They don't even have thought processes like, of course I can go for it and create my dream because they're being run by their subconscious. So you can probably see that it's so important to learn how to start accessing your subconscious because your subconscious holds all the information. You know what it's like when you you learn something new or you have a revelation or you have um, a transformative moment because you're like, oh my goodness, look at that. You've learned something, something new has um, stepped forward. And there's multiple ways that we can do the subconscious. But fortunately, we know that the subconscious is way more powerful than the rational mind. It is much deeper, which is why, you know, as a Scorpio, love to go deep. You want to go deep because that's where the juice 
voice is, right? That's where the truth is. That's where the power is in the depths of your psyche and your subconscious. It will show you so much about yourself. And a lot of it is stuff we are not aware of. We take for granted. We just think that this is the way life is. We will bump up against it when we start fighting for our own value proposition when we feel like something's not right, right? Again, you have to think about it. When you came onto the planet, in a lot of ways, you're called tabula rasa, which is a clean slate, right? And again, we'll go into other subconscious energies connected to all your other incarnations. Uh, I'm probably going to do a show on that on past lives and the Akashic Records soon. But that's kind of another connection because, of course, cellular memory can cross lifetimes. So, but we're talking about this incarnation, this body that you have at this present moment in terms of what you have imprinted since birth and made true, right? It is contributing to your current reality. It is literally determining the choices that you make, how much expansion you allow for yourself, how much you let yourself go for it, you know, your comfort in terms of being willing to shine, to put yourself out there, to be a leading light for other people. It will be all driven by what is going on in your subconscious, which is why it's so important for us to put on our little psychic detective hats and start going in there, right? And a lot of people can have fear about this because they like like it's unknown, it's uncertain, but I can tell you right now, folks, it is so liberating. You know that feeling of liberation where you experience kind of an expansive moment. You're like, oh my goodness, that makes so much sense why I do that, which is why people are often really fascinated with personality testing because it's showing them something about themselves. It's giving them more clarity on who they are and how they're wired. And I think that's one of the most noblest pursuits is to really be the person who's prepared to get to know themselves because what you're really seeking when you do that is to know your infinite self and that's not necessarily an easy thing to do right because a lot of that relationship is through perception it's not through a thought process it is through energy frequency and vibration and we need to get comfortable with those elements to be able to show up to that relationship with the divine because the divine doesn't speak to us just through words you know it might speak to us through somebody else their words, what they are saying, their frequency, their energy, but it doesn't necessarily, you know, we don't all have the experience of having an angel and guide come sit in our living room and just start chatting to us directly. We have to learn what it is to communicate in the universe's language again, energy, frequency of vibration. It was Nikolai Tesla who said that. He said, if you want to know the secrets of the universe, think in terms of energy, frequency and vibration. And boy, was he on the money. Okay, so talking about your subconscious and this iceberg that is way bigger, it's driving a lot of your behaviors, your attitudes, your beliefs. You know, you have a lot of um, limiting beliefs and positive beliefs in your subconscious. But what we want to do is to realize what's the best way to access your subconscious. Now, can you really do it from your rational mind? Not really. You know why? Because your rational mind is less powerful than your subconscious. It's kind of like, um, you know, it's like trying to trying to access a super advanced, you know, uh, uh, iPad or I, um, what do you call these things, a Mac from an old, old model, right? Like the rational mind is really, it's not, you know, it's not like historic or past its use by date. It's just less powerful. We need to go to something that is more powerful to access the subconscious. And of course, what is that? Is your infinite self, your spirit, your infinite nature, the, the universal powers that are to be able to activate those frequencies, energies and vibrations to be able to go into the subconscious and show you information. Hopefully that makes sense, right? We need to go to your super consciousness to be able to access the subconscious effectively. If you're trying to do it from your mind, you're probably trying to do it from your ego, right? Your rational critical mind, the ego reflex, which often is about separation, isolation, disconnection. You want to go from spirit, 
And also, too, your ego can often have an agenda. Now, let's apply this to the concept of abundance. You know, if you're trying to tap into your subconscious to rearrange things from your rational mind, right, you might be doing it with a certain spin or have a certain agenda, right? Like I'm trying to hack into my subconscious to create things in such a way so I can experience more abundance, right? We actually need to kind of go through a process of surrender, really, to our infinite nature to be able to allow those energies to come through and show us what is in the subconscious because often what will happen and again there's nothing there's not no right wrong good bad right when we're working with the superconscious it will show us stuff that often the ego doesn't want us to see right like um that you're repeating a pattern of behavior that you know is unhealthy or it's not serving you or um it's kind of distorting your energy field or it is playing havoc and this could be anything right this could be you know being addicted to shopping um creating money and then giving it all away or losing it or having money blocks or you know having defense mechanisms in place in relationships or having some kind of addictive energy or behavior or not really addressing your own anxiety you know like any social phobia that you might have because it just feels it feels more uncomfortable to look at it than it does to actually deal with the phobia right in a, in a day-to-day setting you know this is this is because your super consciousness if you're choosing to bring that into your life and world you're choosing healing you are choosing to heal And often when we heal, what happens is we have to let go. We don't have to, but if you want to, and of course, you know, if you want to be happy, healthy and whole, you will let go of any resistance that you have to be able to shift identity. Because often we can be invested in our identities, the identity that you have right now, right? What would it take to collapse that paradigm and create something new, more expanded, more abundant? And abundant isn't just about material items, folks. You know, again, I've talked about when you get good at manifesting, it's about creator ability. It's not about the cash. It's about knowing that you can create and therefore you can focus your energy, create, and then, you know, do good things with your creation. Becomes like a... um, you know, a wonderful energetic maneuvering and how you focus your attention and how that plays up in the world. And it becomes like a beautiful energetic dance. However, let's go back to, you know, tapping into your subconscious, what's required to do that. Because again, I heard, um, I just want to speak to this briefly. I heard a comment on the radio too about, you know, consumerism and about how people are obsessed with creating more and more and more and more. And I kind of, I heard that this morning and I was like, oh, I really want to speak to that on the show this morning because I think it's natural to a certain extent, not material items, but it's natural to want to grow. That doesn't mean that you have to be obsessed with buying another house or another car or a bigger house or a bigger car or another swimming pool or the jet ski or whatever, right? If you are focused in the material items, you'll be limiting yourself in terms of what is possible because those material items, they don't have, you know, source energy relationship in them. You want to go to source energy and have that relationship. And ironically, often your desire for the need for more kind of collapses because you know that you can create it if you want to have an amazing holiday you know you can go out and create it if you want to travel if you want to have an amazing experience you know how to use the universal laws to be able to go create it you feel relaxed in that you don't need to prove anything to yourself so I wanted to kind of point out the difference right between the pursuit of abundance because abundance isn't just about money abundance is a state of being right like you feel safe relaxed open Open, 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 open in all your energy fields, open to receiving, open to giving, open, right? And just checking your body right now, you can just do a really quick scan, taking your attention to the top of your head, scanning through your body. How open do you feel? Your body will start, if you start tuning in and asking these kind of questions on a regular basis, your body and your intuition will give you information. Any aches or pains in your body, that can be a real telltale sign of kind of um, stuck energy. And people often disregard this stuff. They just think, oh, you know, I worked too much in the garden yesterday, right? No, it's like your body's always giving you information, 
Right? Your body knows how to heal itself. Your body knows how to, you know, to be in um, flow. So always checking with inside yourself to go, okay, well, how am I feeling? You know, is there any part of my body that's actually pulling on my attention? Is there any part of my energy field that's actually needing more support right now? So starting to ask those questions and noticing the difference, right, between a person who pursues abundance, which is really pursuing a relationship with your super consciousness and knowing that you can create effortlessly from there versus materialism, material needing to consume more and more and more and more and more. You know, like Warren Buffett, right? One of the richest men on the planet, still lives in the same house, apparently still drives the same car. Big difference between the pursuit of abundance versus the pursuit of consumerism. And you know, noticing the difference because there is, if there is a pursuit of consumerism, it often is connected to the ego. Right, if you want to have the experience of having a Lamborghini, you can have that. It's totally fine. But if you have a burning desire to kind of like, I need more, I need more, right? That's the difference between ego and spirit. Your spirit's like, I know I am this, whereas your ego kind of feels on the outside of it. So it needs to prove it to itself, if that makes sense. Wanted to speak to that. So again, coming back to the subconscious and where we are subconsciously holding beliefs or set points, you might like to call them, around money. We want to start unpacking that and kind of asking ourselves some questions. Best way to do that, right, is to get connected to these higher frequencies of energy, which is what I teach people to do, and then to be able to start going into your subconscious and asking and feeling and intuiting and perceiving awareness, you know, and again, for example, uh, you might want to ask yourself in your body, you know, on a scale of one to 10, to what level am I holding energy in my body that is connected to my mum and dad's money story? You know, maybe check individually to kind of separate it out, like to what level am I holding the energy or the imprint of my mum's money story, how she did money. Because I can guarantee you, right, depending on who your, you know, maternal, paternal caregivers were, you will have grown up around them, their beliefs, their attitudes, their subconscious behaviours, which if you're around that, it's part of your energetic soup, so to speak. So you will have imprinted it. Now, if it's a good money story, then that's awesome. But if it's not, then you might want to be going inside of yourself and going, okay, well, where am I holding this energy and how is it showing up as a limiting belief? Now, for example, um, I've given quite a few examples over the years, but let's see if I can tune into something kind of new. All right, feeling guilty for spending money. All right, maybe you had one parent who spent a lot of money and one parent who tried to save the money. Um, so again, that feeling of when you go to spend, buy something nice for yourself, a feeling of guilt maybe because you're kind of seeing this da- dynamic or pattern of that parent spending all the money and that person saving all the money. And depending on how you responded to that, how it made you feel, if that made you feel unsafe, maybe you had a parent who kind of went and blew all the money on clothes, shopping, alcohol, whatever, and there wasn't enough for the rest of the family, depending on how you responded responded to that, that can form an imprint in your subconscious and when you go to spend money as an adult, especially if it's for yourself or you feel like it's frivolous or it's not really for a purpose, then you can end up feeling guilty and kind of not really knowing why. Okay, so maybe you can relate to that story. Uh, Let me see if I can pull another one. Like often, you know, again, the money belief watch is the most prevalent, which I see all the time. It's hard. It is hard to make money, really, right? And sometimes, and it's almost like people, um, you know, there's a little bit of martyrdom in that, but also too, there's often a lot of, um, um, somehow that, you know, there's something heroic about suffering to make money, right? Like I have to work lots of hours, I have to suffer, it has to be hard to receive money, Now, that does all sorts of crazy things to your money flow, right, in terms of contraction, in terms of thinking that you have to slog it out, in terms of the stress that you're creating in your body on a physical level. Um, And I can relate to that. You know, when I worked in banking, 
I used to experience a lot of adrenal fatigue and then of course I would prop myself up with coffee because that's what you do. It's kind of coffee in the morning and then something sugary and sweet in the afternoon and starchy, carby. And then, you know, and your energy levels would just be all over the place and then you would do it just to yourself the next day. A lot of deadlines, a lot of stress, a lot of um, head energy, not really in the body at all. Uh, And I reckon when I left banking, it probably took me about 18 months to unravel and kind of get my central nervous system back to a place where it was like, I don't have to be stressed in order to make money. I actually did an energy clearing on myself. I recognized when I left banking and went into coaching that I was actually putting stress on myself because that was my pattern. My pattern was you have to be stressed to make money. So I was creating stress in my body because that was the pattern. And then I was checking myself and I went, oh my goodness, look what I'm doing. I think that I have to be stressed in order to make money because that was the pattern that I was running. That was the imprint that I had, cleared it out of my energy field. And now it's easy to make money. So a lot of people, you know, that would be probably one of their biggest blocks. It's hard, going from hard to easy. You think about it, if it was just easy to make the level of money that you wanted, what would that do in terms of changing your life, how you felt about your sense of safety in your body, your security? Because you know what? The funny thing is about money is it just takes up so much focus in people's lives. If you don't have this foundation set up where you are, you know, you've got a good relationship going on with money and it is easy, it just takes up so much attention and it just does some really interesting things to you on a deep subconscious psyche level, All right? Fear, scarcity, lack kind of feeling like I can't do that because I don't know if I'm going to have enough money in the future you know it distorts a lot of things it takes up a lot of attention it takes up a lot of focus you know even in the mini abundance challenge last night just talking about that and people were very proficient and it all came very easily talking about how hard it was but to get people to shift into like it can be easy there was a bit of resistance there, right? And we're going to talk to that tonight in the next mini abundance challenge, which I'd encourage you to join. If you're tuning in, you can come join us in the Intuitive Life Academy Facebook group, Creating Profit for Lightworkers. So, and that's on at seven o'clock tonight. And I'm t- taking people through the process, right, of what does it take to actually shift your energy on that subconscious level, going into the deepest parts of our being, the parts that we can't see. You know, we don't, we're not looking at our subconscious. When we are waking up in the rational, critical mind, we are not accessing our subconscious unless we know how to do it. And if this is the 90% of you that's driving your behaviors, your attitudes, and your beliefs, you really want to be stepping into, you know what, I am the creator being in a body. I am going to start accessing my subconscious and doing some redesigning here. I am going to declutter some of the filing cabinets that are holding all these energies and memories and beliefs and behaviors and value systems, especially if they're not working for you. Right, you really, you you know, self inquiry is really the pathway to heaven. If you can start asking yourself some questions from that place, because again, your intuition can often tell you things that you don't want to hear. Right, <laughs> right. On the ego level, your intuition can tell you stuff that you're like, oh, yeah, yeah. like for me, the example I wrote on the Facebook page the other day was how I was at my job. Right? And I was bored, right? I knew what I was doing and I the job in itself was fine. And, you know, kudos to the bank. I learned a lot, but I was in the wrong place. And my intuition was like, hello, is anybody home? Do you realize that you're in the wrong place? This is not a value match for you. Can you not tell? Because it's making you restless, bored, miserable, unhappy. You would not find me at my desk, folks. If it was at all possible in that job to get up and walk away from my desk, I was doing it. Can I make you a cup of tea? I'll make you a cup of tea. Go and make somebody a cup of tea. You know, like I was the tea lady in the office. I'm just going to go and go and have my um, morning break. I'm just going to go to lunch. You know, like any opportunity. I'm just going to go around here and drop this file off to the credit managers. Any opportunity I had to get away from my desk, that was me. 
right? Because I was I was twitchy. I was literally in the wrong place. And my intuition was telling me, showing me, but I was ignoring it. I was too busy in my ego having a wee conniption, you know, like a wee... Are we fit, shall we fasse? Whatever rhymes with fit, that was what I was doing. And I flipped and flopped like a fish out of water for about a good 18 months. If I just listened to my intuition, if I knew how to listen to my intuition at that point in time, I could have saved myself and the people around me a lot of grief because of just tuning in and getting the message, right? This is not for you. It's time to move on. But I was so scared, you know, like the fingernails down the blackboard, the the cat across the carpet, you know, like I was, you know, I, it wasn't for me, but you had to kind of rip me out of that situation. And that's literally what happened, you know. It, and again, the energy was set up that way perfectly. My job got disestablished. So I had to go, right? It was like, and then I still remained for another 12 months in the bank doing a job that I did not know how to do, was completely out of my depth. And it was good because it was a business banking. But, you know, like I I really, big shout out to Steve who really helped me through that time because, you know, I was out of my depth and it was really, it's like, it's time to go. It's time to go. It's time to go. You need to go, right? The, the, The squeeze is being pushed on you because this is not for you. And having the courage to follow that guidance, right? But again, what happens is when we step into something new, guess what happens? All that kind of uh, energy, information, stored information, wisdom, insight, guidance in the subconscious starts rattling around, right? The rational brain can feel it and it goes, oh my goodness, you know, change is coming. What's going to happen? Are you going to be safe? The monkey mind can really kick in and the subconscious starts rattling around a little bit because it knows on a deeper level that change is occurring. Now, this is the amazing thing now in my life and being intuitive, like I can feel change coming from a mile away and I can lean into it rather than resist it. I can be open to it rather than going, you know, going into that backpedaling kind of reversal energy. You can just go, wow, this is awesome. I wonder what this is. I'm curious. I can open up to it. I can feel it. I can perceive it. I know that the expansion is coming and that's safe, right and good. What would it take for me to integrate it on a physical level so it can show up in my reality? So big, big difference. And this is why your intuition is the pathway, right, between the rational critical mind and your subconscious. And when you get really, really good at connecting and then going into your subconscious, you can shift energy really quickly. You know, something that would have bothered your mind for weeks or months or days or even years sometimes, you can go into your subconscious and you can access the information and you can shift it. And that is pretty phenomenal tools, um, toolkit, right? A pretty phenomenal set of tools in terms of being able to create your reality. Now, of course, this is too really, really important in terms of trauma, right? If you've experienced trauma in your past, then this can be massive in regards to being able to have these tools. And again, it's not necessarily about having to relive any experience, but it is often about remembering it to be able to let the energy of it go, right? You can't change the past, but you can change the frequency of the past. If there is past energy that is creating a feeling of woundedness within you, it's looking to be healed. It's looking to be released. It's looking to be neutralized. You know how you've forgiven somebody, right? You just feel neutral. No, you know, no, it doesn't, you don't have to love them. You don't have to trust them again either. You don't have to hang out with them, but you're neutral, right? And neutrality in and of itself is actually a very loving place. It means I'll do me and you do you and and this is all good, right? I don't have to extend myself. I don't have to let you back into my reality, but I can be free and clear of any charge that I'm holding in my energy field in relationship to you. So the subconscious, super powerful. We want to learn how to work with it, get comfortable with it, go into it, access it, allow it to bring us information and allow it to transform us. So once we start doing the work of bringing those shadows up to the light, I kind of also see the analogy like of a cork on the bottom of a a bucket of water, right? And again, eventually, right, you want to allow the, let the cork, 
go it's, like, it's going to take pressure to hold it down and you know what that feels like right like you're pulling back on something because you don't want to see it or don't want to witness it or feel weird or uncomfortable about it eventually no matter what you do it's just it's going to take too much pressure to hold it down too much effort to hold it down than it is to just let it float up to let go and have it float to the surface it's kind of what we want to do with our subconscious allow the information to come up so we can experience that buoyancy that freedom that kind of feeling of being uplifted so your super conscious in regards to your subconscious is really really important and of course once we get to a place where we know how to access the subconscious you're really set for life because then you can start going how do I need to redesign my subconscious so I'm really wiring and gearing myself to energies and frequencies that bring me my ideal life experiences you know what energy are you in to experience like even this morning I was like we're still in the middle of a pandemic but I was still looking up on booking.com like hotels in Luxor and Egypt <laughs> right you know because again this part is calling to me again I love Egypt I've had past lives in Egypt before without a shadow of a doubt um, I had a meditation just a wee while ago and really channeled Nefertiti really strongly who was an Egyptian queen and um, yeah just you know when you open yourself up to different energies you can start going, okay, well, if I want to go to Egypt, for example, or if I want to have an amazing vacation, what kind of energetic frequency am I am to be a, in to be able to create that? How can my intuition guide me or help me start sending energy to that intention? What would need to come together? And this is where we need to start practicing some faith as well. Because if you have faith in your subconscious, not just in your rational mind, again, least powerful, more powerful, infinitely powerful, right? I'm, I'm pointing to my head being the least powerful and then my, you know, my subconscious is more powerful, but you are the heavens above being the most powerful. When you start working with universal energies to redesign your subconscious, so you're programming and imprinting and rewiring and and hacking your subconscious so it works for you you don't have to keep on paying attention eventually because you'll just be wired that way wired for the next opportunity wired for abundance wired for growth you'll notice when you're stagnant and you'll be like oh I'm actually gone back into my default set point so I can choose expansion now right what does it take to be the person who's let go of all their fear because they've done the inner work through the subconscious to now be a person who shows up going, yep, I can create that. Yep, it's a done deal. Yep, I'm going to do that. Yep, what's next? Yes, yes, yes. Like the energy of certainty. It's really super attractive in terms of universal law. The universe goes, okay, you're certain. Okay, there it is. It happens, which is what we're doing in the Facebook group, right? We're choosing the, we're doing the reality testing and being in the energy of like, yes, I can manifest money. Yes, you can. You know, it's the universal principle. If you focus your attention on something and you ask it to come into your reality, your thoughts being electric, your, you know, your feelings being magnetic, you can create that. You're a creator being in a body. So what happens though, right, is our rational mind will listen to something like this and then you'll go about your day and it will kind of fall away often. You need to keep on bringing your focus back to this. If you truly want to be abundant, you'll do the inner work. Because if your default set point is a level of comfort that's just on, you know, J-O-B often, just over broke, or just having enough to survive, you need to do the inner recalibration to be able to experience that more effortless. And there are people who do this, right? And it's scientific. You know, we are, you can literally measure the electromagnetic field around your body. So you can actually literally work on increasing your thought processes, which increases your feelings, which contributes to your electromagnetic field, which makes you stronger in terms of a magnet towards creating what it is that you want. But often the hurdle to get through all of that, right, is learning what it takes to release those limiting fears, beliefs and emotions and what's going on in the subconscious 
which is holding us in a pattern of energy where we're just experiencing the same. And it is, you know, it's in depth. It is a study. It is a lifelong journey. But it is a journey that is so worth taking. Because money becomes a byproduct of the process. You know, money's not powerful. You are. You are powerful in terms of what it is that you wish to create. Do I know now that I'm going to go to Egypt again? Without a shadow of a doubt. Do I know that I can create that? Without a shadow of a doubt. You know, I've already got the images in my mind of where I'm going and what places I'm staying in. And, you know, place I looked at today, which was so opulent. And it was like $125 New Zealand for the night. It was just like, oh my goodness, you know, that's incredible. That's so achievable. So again, starting to start asking yourself... What else is possible? What is it? You know, how much energy am I actually focusing on my ideal outcome in terms of going, okay, this is the energy of this outcome. Where is my energy in relationship to that? How much do I have to recalibrate my energy for that to be a match so the universe can make the invisible visible and actually literally bring it in? So, hey, folks, thanks for tuning in on Facebook. It's always a pleasure. Love you guys bunches. And uh, if you want to continue listening, you can tune into 96.9 or you can catch the rest of this on the podcast on iTunes or Spotify by searching for Find Your Bliss. All right, folks, lots of love. See you later. Bye for now. So, folks, just to reiterate, today we have been talking about redesigning your subconscious for abundance and understanding kind of a little bit more of how you work as a human (laughs) right how you are made up you're an oscillating field of energy you have a physical body you have all these energy fields around you your thought processes are contributing to your electromagnetic field as is your heart space Um, you know again your subconscious is super powerful it's full of you know the past It's full of your belief systems. It's often full of your culture, your background, your morals, your beliefs, your attitudes, your instincts, your behaviors. So we really want to go to higher frequencies of energy, which is universal energy, which is the quantum field, which is pure love frequency. Bring that down into our awareness. Ask to be shown the truth. Take that energy with us into the subconscious and start asking some questions. You know, what brings you joy? Do you even ask yourself those kind of questions? Do you um, do you spend time thinking about what lights you up? And because you know what happens, the beautiful thing that happens when, when you start thinking about what it is that you want or what it is that you desire, the amazing thing is, is that your brain, mind and your subconscious will start giving you information for all the reasons why that's not possible, <laughs> which is kind of cool in a way when you know how to access the tools because then when you start feeling into that because what will happen go oh you know maybe it's my experience of wanting to go to Egypt for example and then you're like oh that sounds like an amazing idea but then what you'll start noticing is maybe there's a thought or a feeling or a sensation that starts coming up that says oh that's not possible or oh, that's never going to happen Oh, COVID. Oh, you know, oh, oh, I have to take the vaccine to go traveling. All the stories start coming up, right? Um, oh, there's no point doing that, you know? Um, it's too hard. It's too much to organize. It's too expensive. Like all the stories, the rational mind, again, can be kind of like the surface level of what the subconscious is showing you, you know? So the thought process in your mind might be, it's too hard but the energy that's stored in the subconscious if you drill down into it and this is what I spend a lot of time doing as an intuition coach right is reading people's energy um, field going into their subconscious and actually being able to go okay that is there you don't you don't think it's too hard to be able to go and do a trip to Egypt because you actually have fear inside of you that is connected to the situation that happened where you imprinted some energy when you were like five years old. And once you have the ability to be able because again, all your past selves live in your subconscious. All of them. And the state of them. You know, even tuning in right now to your six year old self. 
just ask yourself on a scale of one to ten, generally speaking, for the year of being six years old, how happy were you? One being low, ten being high. You know, it's going to give you some information, but this is the thing. We need to learn how to ask really good questions to be able to go. And again, depending on how open or how intuitive or how aware you are, you might get an instantaneous answer. You know, maybe it's maybe it's two, two out of ten. It wasn't a great year. Mum and dad were fighting. That was the year mum and dad got divorced, et cetera, et cetera. Not my parents. My parents, you know, married till my dad passed. But um, again, you know, depending on what your life experience has been, and just checking in with that and kind of going, okay, well, you know, if I was checking in with my 13-year-old self, how happy were they on a scale of 1 to 10? What was contributing to that? All of that is stored in your subconscious. And it's so powerful because they tell you what, folks, every single time a coconut, every single time a coconut, if your younger selves aren't lined up, then it's going to be difficult for you to move towards your dreams. It's always a younger self that's often fearful or scared or needs attention or needs reassurance or needs some comfort to know that it's safe, right and good to expand, to grow. You know, you can know it in your mind and your mind can be like, of course I want that. Of course I want to create more money. Of course I want to be a millionaire. Of course I want to have this amazing experience. Of course I want to have successful business. But all the younger selves inside of you can be like, I am scared to death that's never going to happen, right? So again, that can be a contributing factor in regards to the subconscious and it's a very powerful one. So even learning what it takes to start asking intelligent questions of your subconscious and the and the parts of yourself that have all the records, you know, and that's one type of record. The other records that I mentioned previously are the Akashic records. So the Akashic records are actually... You know, it's a a record, a library, essentially, an uh, esoteric library of all your past lives. So every other incarnation that you've had on the planet. And I'm going to actually do a show on that for the radio show. So, um, yeah, we'll do that soon because the Akashic Records can give you so much more information on a deeper level, right? To be able to go into the records and ask questions, right? Like, what did I do in a past life? What what, what business did I do? How was I employed? You know, um, a lot of the people in your life right now, you will have connections with in your past lives, You know, sometimes I've seen it where people have been married to their brother in a past life or, um, you know, they've killed one of their family members in a past life. Some of the energies in the Akashic Records can be pretty full on sometimes, right, which can give you so much understanding in regards to how you feel about people in your life in the here and now. And often, you know, it's your soul tribe, your monad, as they call it, which is the collection of souls that you kind of travel with and that they you make agreements with, right? We're going to come into this incarnation and these are the lessons we're going to learn in this lifetime. And I know when you're in the middle of the lessons, you can sometimes be questioning your soul contract and going, really, did I really sign up for this? Who's who's put there? Put your hand up if that's you. (laughs) It's definitely been mean at times where you'd be like, I got that you guys up there, you got this. I think you've got the wrong contract. I think you've given this to the wrong person. I'm really not sure that I signed up for this. I think I might have signed that in a hurry. Yeah, it's all part of the process and it's it's wonderful. It is really, really wonderful when you start working with a wider perspective. You know, one of the biggest things that you can do in life, which is a really simple, quick tip, is that if you are struggling in your life, you need to expand. Now, what does that mean? Like on a physical level, it could mean go find a hill and check your horizon line. <clears throat> it's one of the best pieces of advice. That's why I live in a place that has a very expanded view because it helps me in terms of thinking in, a, in an expanded way. I chose it energetically on purpose. Right? I have a great view out over the water very expanded. It gives you that feeling of limitlessness. It gives you that feeling of spaciousness. And if you're suffering, if your head is kind of caved in on itself, if you're feeling contracted in your energy field, go up to the top of a hill, look at the view, 
Feel the feeling of expansion. Feel it in your body. Feel it in your energy. Feel it in your mind by looking at the view. Super hot tip. So, um, because you will instantly feel better because you'll feel more expanded, which is your natural state, which is why we want to get connected to those higher frequencies of energy and go into expansion because that is your natural state. It can actually feel, you know, really constricting for a soul to be in a body. Your soul is bigger than your body anyway. But if you've ever felt those feelings, I call it divine homesickness, that feeling of like, I just want to go home, right? I just want to go back to heaven. I I'm not enjoying my human life experience. It's really common, but it just means that there's part of you that needs to be unlocked so you can see the truth about what is actually happening in your current reality. There's something that you're being blindsided by. You're not seeing the truth. You're focused on the illusion. Go sit on top of a mountain and look at the view and get that feeling of expansion. Even going somewhere where you can see the horizon line can be really great in terms of expanding your energy and your frequency. So folks, I hope you've enjoyed the show today. I hope this has been illuminating in terms of helping you to realize how powerful your subconscious is, but fortunately how even more powerful and infinitely powerful your super consciousness is and how your rational critical mind really is not always serving you, but it's the place we spend most of our time. We want to really learn what it is to move out of our head and into our body in the first instance, to start living from our heart space and let go of anywhere we have any defense mechanisms in place which can often occur where we've experienced some heartbreak in terms of abundance too super important for the head heart and the root to all be lined up you know so you're focusing your attention on where you want it to go you're feeling good about it and you're open to receiving the experience that you wish to create you know and if you have any fear in your body it can close your energy down so that's the work, right, of tapping into the subconscious and going, okay, where are my filing cabinets? Am I holding the energy of fear? What's it connected to? Is it connected to a younger self who's feeling fearful about moving forward? There's probably elements of that there. We are doing the three-day mini abundance challenge in the Facebook group. So again, like I said previously, if you want to be involved in part of that to learn how to have a clear path on aligned manifesting, then do come and join us 7 o'clock tonight. You just need to go over to Facebook and find the... the, the group, which is the Intuitive Life Academy Creating Profit for Lightworkers. The other thing that's happening this weekend, folks, is I'm actually doing a training, which you'll be able to keep. So the videos in the Facebook group will only be up until Saturday because I'm sharing some really valuable information. But again, for a small fee, 22 US dollars, you can actually get the training on Sunday morning and take your time, relax into it. I'll be live on the call. You'll be able to have any questions answered in regards to creating a clear path in regards to how to manifest. Like you'll literally be able to walk away going, if I implement this, I will know how to manifest what it is that I want. And that you can find by going to www.rebeccadavison.life. It's on the front page. It says webinar this Sunday, uh, Intuitive Abundance. So yeah, do come and join us over in the group though. It's super fun. I love the tribe there. They're such a warm, welcoming bunch of people and people who are really choosing to live from their spirit, choosing to live into those high frequencies of energy and choosing to really calibrate. And and again, you know, a lot of people might say, oh, you know, this work, you know, you're, you're just, you're brainwashing. I've kind of heard that before, which is kind of funny because you kind of have to look at it and go, well, who's to say that you weren't brainwashed in the first? place right that you're brainwashed into suffering or contraction or seeing yourself as damaged or broken which is a lot of what marketing is about right that somehow that you're broken so therefore you need to fix yourself as opposed to realizing that you were never broken and you just need to let go of other people's opinions and start listening to your own inner guidance and following what is true for you you know um 
you know, even yesterday, like even doing, you know, giving my time, energy and attention to the group because I'm wanting to contribute to other people's abundance, to contribute to raising their vibration. And still, right, there's still somebody who's like, I don't like this, you know, putting angry faces on the posts. And it's, and you know, it's so great to get to that place where you're just attached and it's just like that person just doesn't understand yet in regards to how it works. So if you have resistance coming up to any of the information that I've shared, just know, right, that that resistance is the exact kind of thing that stops you from actually getting what it is that you want, right? And it can be really confronting when we realize it's actually up to us. And at the end of the day, it's a choice. And the choice is is here and every moment. So in saying that, folks, thanks for choosing to listen to the Intuitive Life Academy here on uh, the Find Your Bliss radio show. I love you guys bunches. I hope you have an amazing day. And um, yeah, take good care of yourselves. And I'm trying to find the wee link so I can do the outro. Take good care of yourselves. And I look forward to tuning in and talking to you again next week here on Plains FM. All right, folks, lots of love. Bye for now. Bye.